Welcome everybody to the CNC with Dave Gatton show. Um, got Javi and Michael Murray with me here tonight. Uh, Javi will help me watch the chat and Michael will be uh, moral support, <laughs> I guess. And probably we'll have some questions uh, too, I would, I would guess. I don't know, Mike, do you use uh, the MDI commands at all? Or any use the MDI feature? Nope. Don't know what it is. Okay. Well, that's good. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. <laughs> and while I'm at it, I see we've already got a pretty good crowd over there in the chat. How many folks over in the chat use MDI and, and understand what it does? We'll give you all a second to answer. And while you're doing that, I'll mention that uh, we've only got a few more days left for the, let's see, just a couple, I guess. Uh, for the Gatton CNC Christmas Challenge, um, we got a bunch of, uh, well, not a bunch, but we got four or five entries in so far. Uh, I don't know if everybody's waiting until the last minute or what. We got um, Awesome Wood Things, uh, Matt Haas sent one in today. Uh, we got one from Rob Schuster. I hope I don't forget anybody. Let's see. Uh, Mike Heitschu has sent in two different entries you can really enter as many times as you want as long as it's on a separate video uh and then there's uh david battershell that's who the other one is uh, i don't see him out there in the chat but anyway thank you all for joining us tonight okay a few folks seen it but nothing but a big question to me Okay, use in use MDI and sometimes get it right. Now that <laughs> that's that's good. Uh, we're going to kind of touch on the basics. I mean, I'm not going to go way in depth on it, but I'll I'll show you a little bit. I'll show you how I use it, um, and um, you know maybe that'll give you some ideas about something. Um, and we're also going to touch on the. Uh, on that MDI page, which is like the second one over from, um, you know, when you're in Mach 3, it's the second page over. Um, we're also going to touch on the uh, that teach function a little bit. I have never used it. Um, I know how to use it, but I just never had, had a reason to use it. But I'll, I'll kind of go over something real simple with that. Um, just so you'll know how to how to use it. Um, it's really something you probably wouldn't want to use unless it is something really simple because you have to type in the, the command. So um, I don't have a sock hat, David Mitchell. I don't closest thing I have it would be a red Alabama hat. <laughs> so uh, I don't have a Santa hat. But anyway, so we'll uh, we'll get started. Uh, talking about that. Uh, Javi, you got anything you want to plug or anything? Uh, not, not at the moment. Um, other than, obviously, I like to plug Matt, Matt Haas's upcoming okay. Makers Rock. But, uh, no, nope, just the Christmas challenge. Yeah, I got I got to get busy on that, too. I, I got a, it was working on that probably two months ago, and, and I kept thinking, oh, I got plenty of time, and now it's kind of you know, if I'm not careful, it'll be here uh, before you know it. So I'm gonna have to get get back on that. Um, what about you, Michael? You got anything going on? You want to talk about any projects or? Nah, I'm, I'm right now. I'm in the middle of making a couple of stools on the the orange uh, the orange beast here, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, put the spoil board down. You know, having some. A little bit, little bit at a time. Okay. Um, all righty. Well, I guess we'll go ahead and get into the uh, MDI discussion. I've already got Mach 3 opened up, so I'll be doing a screen share here in a little bit. Uh, there's Mike Heitchew from Kentucky. I was just talking about you, Mike. Um, yeah. Um, I see Hobby's already put manual data input. Does somebody already ask what what the uh, what MDI stands for? 
that's uh, that's what it does stand for manual data input so let me do a uh, screen share here yeah for those of you completely new to CNC there's a line on most either Mach 3 or other such programs cam programs that will allow you to manually enter a what, one line of G code uh, directly and make the machine it'll allow you to make the machine do just about anything uh, well that you can do in one line yeah yeah um, and because I think probably most people use Mach 3 um, I could be wrong but that's that's what I'm going to be demonstrating with tonight uh, I, I do know on the UC CNC software, the MD, MDI thing is right on that main page. You don't have to flip to a different page. Uh, now, I don't know if it has a teach function or not. I can't remember because I haven't opened it up in a long time. But I'm going to uh, be using Mach 3 for the, for the demonstration tonight. And like I said, we're not going to get real crazy in depth. We're going to keep it kind of short tonight and hopefully give folks a basic understanding of of uh, how to use it all right so let me do a screen share here and this is uh, this course is Mach 3 and this is the main page and like I said, the second one over is the MDI. You can hit it by either clicking on that with a mouse or the Alt-2 is the keyboard shortcut. Um, so we'll just come over here. And you can, might recognize this. This is uh, the program for my hold downs. And I was talking the other week about how uh, whenever I'm you know running anything, if I have a little scrap piece a section of the blank where I can fit some hold downs in while I got the material clamped uh, you know to the table I go ahead and uh, pull either this one this is what uh, called hold down clamp zero because it's running horizontal and then I have another one that's a single part program that will run it uh, at 90 degrees so whichever one I, I need to, to use up the scrap that's what I do so Basically, the if I come back over here again, you can see that I've got this figure to be seven by two. It's the part itself isn't that big, but uh, two inches is what I know I can. All I need to get get that out of. So when I load this up, I'll run the first part. Like I said, it's just a single part program. So uh, I'll run that first one, and then I'll come over here to this page, and let's say I'm going to do a vertical row of them. I just would hit G zero Y two and you can see it moving. If you look over to the right and see the screen there, so it'll move up. Then once I get that, I just re zero this and hit cycle start again. And you can see it's back on where it's going to put another one. And I just do that, you know, for as many times as I can fit it in. And if I need to, uh, to run it the other way, I can do the same thing with this one. This is the same part, only vertical. So if I'm going to run a, a row of them going this way, I would put X2, or if I'm going to run them up this way, you know, just depending on what it is, I would change it um, to either two or seven. Um, and that's how you can use up scrap, and that, that works really well. But just so that uh, for the new people who may not have used this before, let's say let's say I put in a command. I put G0x1.5. And it'll move over. And then I realize, like, oh, that's not, that's not enough. I need to move it over a half an inch. Well, you have to remember that this thing is always going from the zero. So if I put G uh, zero X I thinking I'm going to move it over a half an inch, it's not. It's going to the 
a half inch from where that original zero is. So you have to remember that, that that's what it's talking about. Any command you put in here, you're telling it a position to go to based on wherever the, the zero was that you have set up. Dave, I've got a question. Uh, I've, I've often used, uh, to, to reposition my, my router, I've of, often used the MDI without the G0. I just do the X0Y0 or X2Y2 or whatever I happen to do. Um, is, it, is there a reason it, that works? I mean, is it, is it optional uh, for a fast speed? No, it's, it's just habit from, from me knowing G code. That's why I put it in there. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I mean, it's a rapid move. Yeah, uh, I, I learned it without the G zero. I mean, it just for uh, well, I learned it as a shortcut. Yeah, I, I was just wondering if there's any difference or if there's any way that the G is necessary uh, in any case. So you know, I might not make a mis so I don't make uh, a mistake. You see, I just put X two and it moved without without that G zero. It's just that I'm, you know, having started out having to write G code by hand. Yeah. That's what that's I mean with I, most I understand with most G code commands you do need the G code. Just this particular one, I was just curious if it was just an optional thing, uh or or uh or or you had to put it in if yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think yeah, I think it'll do the same. Now I don't know what speed it will move at if you don't put it in there, but if you put the G zero it's going to move at whatever you have your rapid speed set to in your settings. Gotcha. So if, if I guess if you hit just, and, and this is just a guess, I'd have to try it to see, and you can't really tell by, by this because I'm not connected to a machine. But I'm guessing that if you put the X2 and didn't put the G0 in front of it, it's going to move at whatever speed it last moved at. Right. Okay. That's probably where, yeah, I, most of the time, um, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just curious to know if, yeah, if, uh, if I start moving it at a slower speed, I guess that, that in that instance, you would definitely have to have the G zero in front of it, um, you know, or it'll move slower. Yeah. yeah. Um, let me go back here and load this other one back in again. Put this one in here that way to clear that stuff out another thing i wanted to show you is you know like i said i i would run one and notice how since i've already entered some stuff that little window right right here pops up another nice thing is you can take your arrow keys and go up and catch the one that that you've already used before. So you don't really, if, it, if you're doing the same thing, this is why I say it's real fast when I'm trying to run multiples of this, say this little part here, but I only have the one program. It's it's quicker for me to do it this way than it would be to go back into VCAR Pro, bring that part in, make a little multiple, you know, uh, four or five parts or whatever. I can just sit here. I guess I should zero that back out. Uh, but you know i zero it run one and then i come here and of course i wouldn't have these other ones in here so we only have the one and you just keep hitting that and it'll go up the two inches yep i just zero that hit cycle start and go again so it's you know it's to me that's just quicker than having to go write a little program because you know you don't want to have to write a little program for every little piece of drop because if you've got a a sheet of material on there and you cut, you know, say you cut big letters and you've got an O and stuff like that. Well, you may want to cut inside that inside part of the O, you know, and it's just easier just to move the machine, either jogging it or with the MDI commands to a spot, set a zero, and then just run off a bunch of these using that command like that. So, oh, and I did want to mention too, I should have mentioned it earlier. Down in the show notes here, when you hit the show more, I have a link to the Mach 3 user manual, which is called Using Mach 3 Mill. And, you know, if you want to download that and 
if you don't already have it, and you can uh, follow along with what I'm talking about here. The pages I'm talking about is uh, the manual data input, which starts at three page 3-7 and then 3-8. Uh, well, the teaching starts on 3-8. Uh, seven and carries over to three dash eight if you want to, if you want to follow along a lot of people you know i think a lot of people probably go get the mock three they download it and they install it and they probably don't ever even get the manual yeah matt is asking how do you jog it uh over here uh well there's two ways you set up some hotkeys so the way I jog my machine with Mach 3 is I have my keyboard set up so that as I'm facing the front of the machine, everything works, you know, the arrows point in the same direction the machine's going to move. So, uh, in other words, if I want to jog it from the left side of the machine to the right side of the machine on the X axis, I hit the right arrow key. If I want to jog it back to the left, I hit the left arrow key. If I want to drop, uh, jog the y-axis or the whole gantry forwards toward me where I'm standing at the front of the machine, I push the down arrow. If I wanted, uh, wanted to go back towards the back of the machine, I push the up arrow. Um, and then for the z-axis, it's real simple because it's either page up to move the z up or page down to move the z down. So... I think Matt's got a different kind of machine, so that's, and I think it's, uh, what is a, what is a Shapeoko, or no, it's, it's the X, the small X carve. It's probably runs on that, um, uh, Arduino thing, right? So he's probably using that, that, uh, interface that comes with that, which is, I guess, proprietary to that machine. Okay, uh, let's see. What else was I going to show here? It's really not a whole lot to talk about. Anybody got any questions about, about the MDI? Like I said, the main thing you have to remember is that when you put in an input there, it's, you know, if you need it to move uh, 10 inches and you put in five and then go, oh, I need to put in another five, it, that's not going to move. You have to tell it to go to the position uh, X10 or Y10, whatever it is. Yeah, Arduino with the X carve. Okay. Um, one other thing that's really handy for this. Now, again, you know, I'm just showing you what I put in, but it's not going to make any sense. Um, if I'm out at, in my shop and, and I have the the garage works out there where I have my laser. Uh, another thing I can do is I can put in a command, uh, well, I don't even have to put G0, I guess, for this. Uh, but I can put in a command that will turn on my laser, but it will turn it on at real low power. So I can use just the beam to eyeball my location to set my zero. Um, and that is... Uh, let's see, it's MO3 to turn it on uh, with an S uh, 10 because mine is set up where it runs um, 100 is max power uh, and then of course zero is no power. So I can tell it to turn, to turn on with a power of 10, which is going to be, you know, just barely turned on enough to see the beam. And then I can set the zero position so I can hit that. Again, it's not going to do anything here because nothing's hooked up. Uh, and then I can just come back and hit MO5 and turn it off when I'm done. Yep, Rob Hampton said you can also use MDI to turn on your spindle if you have it set up to run through, be controlled through Mach 3. Uh, you can change the speed. I mean, any commands that are in a program, you can put here. Like if you, um, you know, if you want to tell it to, to cut something manually, you could. Uh, but, 
you know, usually I just use it to move to a different position. I'm looking over there for questions. I don't see any. Uh, uh, Matt was asking if uh, he was confirming whether, uh, uh, let me get this straight. He said uh, Aspire is the, uh, uh, let's see here. He said Mach 3 is the software that controls the CNC machine and Aspire builds the carve file. You send a, yes, uh, as I just put in the uh, thing, uh, Aspire vCarve, vCarve Pro, cut 2D, 2.5D, cut 3D, uh, and uh, also photo vCarve. Um, they are the design programs which will create the toolpaths. Mach 3 is the CAM program which will take the toolpath line by line, interpret it, and send it to the straight to the machine, to the controller, or straight to the machine if you have no controller. Yeah. Now, what I'm going to show you here when we talk about this little teach function, you can write a program with this and I'm going to show you how to do it here with this teach function in, in just a second however like I said let me uh, let me come over to here and I, I did a uh -oh. uh, didn't like that let's see if I can open it up again Okay, we're back. Well, I was going to open up something different anyway. I don't know why that, but it may have something to do with this is my desktop and there's not a machine hooked to it. Uh, but if you wanted to do just a simple four inch square, maybe you just wanted to test your, uh, you know, you just want to cut a, a, a four inch square and then measure with calipers just to check to see if your machine's off or what have you. Uh, this is, you can see this over here on the right. This is just a simple four inch square. Now this is what I, uh, this program I made in VCAR Pro, but just for a simple uh, four inch square, there's how long that program <laughs> is. Uh, now I had it where it's a quarter inch thick and I'm cutting one eighth per pass. So it's gonna make two passes, but still, you can see how there's a lot of gobbledygook in there just for a simple, simple little square. So we're going to use that teach method to uh, <laughs> to write a to write a really simple program for a square. But like I said before, you probably won't want to try to use this for anything very complicated at all because it does take a lot of typing. Uh, Frankie CNC is asking, what's the G code to make the CNC wrap gifts? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I think it, it's probably a MOM command or something. <laughs> MOM. I don't know what, I don't know what it would be at your house. Yeah. yeah. W I F E. Yeah. W I F E. I suppose. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to try to, uh, well, it's actually still showing up. Let me go over there and get rid of that program so it won't show up over here. But I'm going to, I'm going to start off, and I'm going to try to do the same thing. I'm going to try to type the, the code to do a program for a four-inch square, and we're going to start in the middle just like that one did. So if I tell it to... Uh, let's see the first command. We don't want it to cut. So we want it to be G zero. Uh, let's see. I guess we should put our starting thing in here. Just, uh, yeah, we'll put that. Okay. Now you don't see anything yet, but if, if oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I forgot to start it. So I'm going to hit start teach. Yeah, you got to get get the silly thing started. Okay, so there's going to be the first line. Okay, and then you just start typing in the, the lines you want. Uh, let's see. Let's go, uh, if we're starting in the middle, uh, it'd be G, 0, uh, X, um, minus. And we're going to use a quarter-inch end mill. 
And of course, half a quarter inch end mill is one eighth. So that's why I'm going to two and an eighth. Uh, oops, why two? Okay, so now we've moved it. If if you could picture this being here, we moved it from the center over to here. Okay. Now we're going to do G zero. Uh, let's see. Let's see. It's going to be. Oh, you know what? I've already messed up. I think. I didn't make that other one a negative two. Well, that's okay. We're starting on the other side then. Y2. Um, yeah, I should have made that a negative to, to do the way I wanted to. But that's okay. Uh, Y2. Let's see. So now it's going to be. Okay. Now we need to go down because we're at that spot. So we need to tell the Z to go down. And we're going to we're going to go ahead and cut the whole thing a quarter inch at a time. So it won't be such a long program. OK, so now it's in there. Now the next line is going to be G1 so that it will cut at the feed rate, whatever we have set up. Wait, where did you turn the spindle on? Well, I don't have this one set up. If I had oh, okay. that, I would need to put a command telling it uh, uh, S whatever, whatever oh, RPM, okay. if it was wired up. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, so let's see. G1, we're at uh, X, Y2. So we're going to come down to, um, let's see here. X minus. I'm going to go ahead and put these other numbers in, even though I don't need to, just to help people think it might make more sense if I do that. Okay, so now we're down at that. Now we're down at this corner right here. So the next line will be G1, X 2.125. Y. Okay, well, I, yeah, I, I'll put that in just so people can see what I did. I hope I'm not getting anybody confused because I know there's nothing showing up over there. But you can see this thing here is moving uh, as we as we type this in. And you can see right now why you wouldn't want to do this for a very long program because you got unless you really like to type and I hate to type. OK, so now we're over on the right lower corner. So now we go G1, X2.125, Y2.125. OK, so now we're in the upper right hand corner. And then the next line will be G1, X minus 2.125, Y, 2.125. And then the next one will be G1, oops, 1. And again, I'm just, I'm just putting these numbers so maybe it will make it clearer to people who are trying to follow along. Uh, y. Okay, now we should have. Okay, now I'm going to go G zero. C. Uh, I'm just going to raise the Z up to get it out. Okay, I'm going to stop it right there. And just show you. I'll wait for that to get up. To, I don't know if it matters. Not on that, but well, I don't know how, if that matters. Or not. I'm gonna go ahead and stop that. No, it doesn't matter, I guess. Okay, now if I hit load edit. 
it's going to load that what I just typed in. And hopefully I did it right or at least close enough that it's not going to be all over the place. It may it may be wait till it, it gets to that spot before it generates the path. I don't, I can't believe this thing didn't keep up with me. I wasn't typing that fast. I got a quick question from uh, Jim Bashirs as we were talking about uh, the difference between Aspire and V-Carve. Uh, I just figure rather than type it, I'll say it. Uh, Aspire, while Aspire will allow you to fully design a 3D uh, carving, a uh, uh, Vectric Pro, I mean, a uh, uh, VCarve Pro from Vectric will allow you to import a 3D image, and you can, and you can still carve it. You just cannot manipulate it, manipulate its design with VCarve Pro. All you can do is import the, the final design. So I, I, I think I hope that explains. Uh, a little bit what I was what I was saying that you can do everything theoretically in VCarve Pro. It's just uh, limited to you getting another 3D design program uh, and importing it in. Yeah, the VCarve Pro will do the 3D models, but you have to import them. You can't design them in vcar pro that's the big difference between the right that's why, that's why the aspire is two grand and the vcar pro is 700 bucks yep yep i'm not sure what this thing is doing <laughs> it's i didn't uh i didn't expect it to take this long because that's only a simple is it still rendering or did it lock up no it's still running hmm Oh yeah, yeah, I see it there. So <laughs> I don't know why it's uh, why it's taking so long. This may be a fail here. I'm not sure. We'll see. Yeah, Mark so brings out a good point. You you can you can do some minor editing, resizing, slicing, and scaling. Scaling is is pretty important because if let's say you have a 3D model of a, of a horse's head and the 3D model is five inches high, say half a head, whatever. You can actually make it three quarters of an inch high uh, while keeping the other two dimensions. You can flatten it a little. So there are some limited functions that you can do uh, scaling wise, <clears throat> but not a full, not a, you can't change the design. Hopefully when you worked and wrote G code, you got paid by the hour, not by the job. <laughs> well, yeah, it's uh, like I said, I haven't wrote any of this stuff in a long time, so there's no telling what kind of mistake I may have just made. But uh, I was doing this earlier, and I, I don't remember it taking this long, so I may have messed something up. I don't know, but it's still cutting because you can see it's still it's still at the depth of a quarter. Yeah, yeah Rob, Rob Hampton, Hampton says you, you can put. Uh, uh, Multiple commands into MDI separated by commas. Is it commas, Dave, or semicolons? For uh, I don't know if you can do that or not. Yeah, because I, I well, let's see. I, I know you can in in Win C and C. Let me see if you can do it in Mach three. I'll look that up real quick. Although Mark will probably uh, chime in any moment here. I'm reading in that that manual, and I don't. I don't see anything where it says that you can do that. And I do know it says that if you're unsure about the speed, you can put the speed um, in in a line and hit hit enter and then put, you know, in other words, if you put like G0 or um, let's say G1, X2, Y5, F30, you know, it, it's going to go 30 inches a minute. But if you're unsure about whether it's going to do something first or not, you can put it separately. Like you could put F30 
enter, and then put the next line telling it where to go. Yeah, I did. Uh, I mean, I did something similar as I created a macro uh, or a few macros, but a macro is just multiple lines and it's it's not so much MDI. Uh, Lyle Foyt says raise the feed rate. Yeah, and I don't think that I don't think that makes any difference in when it's when it's not connected to a machine. Uh, it's giving you an error code there, I think, or something. You got a window. Uh, that's where it says, please wait, generating path. Well, maybe, oh. <laughs> maybe it's just moving a little faster. I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. But anyway, it's making the square, so maybe I did do that part right. Because if you, if you watch these, these readouts, you can see it's now coming. It's going from the plus 2.125, and now it's coming over here to the negative 2.125 and it'll come down here and it'll be done. But anyway, I, I, I don't think it takes a genius to see that this is, this will work, but it's not, uh, you know, if you had a whole bunch of lines, like if I was going to make this in, uh, well, I'm going to, I'm going to show you if I, if this was say a quarter inch material, I could do it and tell it to cut one eighth deep and then I would stop and only type half of that. And then I would go open up the code in the editor and copy and paste and then change the Z. So you saw so it, you know, so you're not typing all of that twice. It's coming on down. It's gonna. We'll. Uh, I tell you what. We'll kill some time. Okay. So, uh, Matt what... was had a question. If uh, let's see, all of the commands you recorded were captured without any visual feedback. Is there a way to see visually your work while you're doing the data entry? Um. I there. I mean, there is actual uh, visual feedback, uh, Matt. Uh, on the top right there, you see where the toolpath is is going. Uh, is that right, Dave? Yeah, it's it's showing it. It's just doing it really slow. Yeah, really slow. <laughs> it's almost done now. It's almost to the to the end. And then you'll see that. Well, you won't really see the Z because I'm not connected to anything. But the Z command will come up where it's going to raise it back up to one inch. There it's going up to one. Okay, so now if I come over here to program run, now you'll see here's the part, and here is the code that I just just wrote. I'm going to cancel that because I don't I don't know that, that it, that's doing anything, but so. Like I was saying, let's say it, since I set this for uh, to cut a quarter inch deep, if this was half inch material, I could now go and edit this file and I could just take all of these uh, right here. Well, no, I got to get that one too. And I could just copy those, put them right here and then change this Z to half inch. And now it would make two passes. First pass at a quarter inch deep and the second pass at the half inch deep. So you'd have to figure out ways to do things like that to, to save yourself some time. And of course, then I could also go, well, I forgot to tell it to go, go back to um, home when it finishes. Oops. Terrible typist. And we'll just, well, the Z was already up at one, so we could save that. And see, and then what this does is it saves everything you type as you hit enter. It's saving it into a program. I believe it's called Teach something. Uh, I think it says it over here somewhere. Teach. Yeah, I think that's, I think, I, well, I don't see it now, but yeah, that's where it saves it. 
So what's, what's, oh, yeah, there M9, what's M9 and M30? Uh, M30 is a uh, program and I think. Okay. okay. Let's see. M, uh, I'm, I'm just I'm looking just at one of the programs I had up. Yeah. Yeah. Program end and rewind is M30. Okay. So that's what I mean. To, to really get it where it would run right, you would have to know all this stuff and, and fill it in. Like I said, you saw when I did the uh, uh, loaded that program that just this four inch square that I did with vcar pro it was a lot longer you know but it's also putting the header and it's putting all that other information which is nice but again if you're out at your machine and, and you you maybe you don't have vcar pro on that computer you use the office computer or whatever for programming you know and you just need to do a little test square or something something really simple like this you could do but for anything else it's not that great of a feature to me because I don't like to type and you saw how much I had to type just to get that little, that little four inch square in there. So, you know, back in the day when, you know, you didn't have all those nice software programs, that's the way it was. You had to, you had to manually write all that stuff. Yeah, that's gotta be interesting. It's uh, imagine imagine taking a G code and entering it in line by line like a five hundred line G code, while the machine is running. <laughs> you're entering line by line. Yeah, but the main thing I hope in any uh, newbies that are out there watching tonight, the main thing I hope they get from this is that this MDI command is real handy to move, you know, from one from wherever you're at. To another spot on the machine just by typing it in if you know exactly how far to go um dave would that also work with a spindle like a like a the what is it the fourth fifth axis or whatever yes like if you had a spindle and you were putting words on it you just wanted to rotate it you know yeah if you knew the exact angle to rotate it sure. okay yeah, yeah. You can, uh, you can, I mean, there's, be this. it'd be something like this. You'd put Z, uh, I mean, G zero, uh, A would be your, uh, rotary axis. And then if you put, um, no, that's not right. What would it be? Let's see. A, A is the angle. Yeah. And then 90, right? That's what it would be. 90, yeah. So if you're just rotating in 90 degrees, that's, that's what it would be. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, I mean, there are, I mean, there's, and any command in the book, like Dave was showing, uh, I use mine not only to move, but uh, to turn the spindle on and off. I've mentioned this before. Every now and then, I'll get an error, an over-limit error. And for some strange reason, my program does not turn off the spindle when it reaches a, uh, a Z over-limit or, or any other under or over-limit. It just stops the code right there. Mm -hmm. But it leaves the spindle on, which is quite annoying. So I just, I just, you know, t turn the spindle off uh, that way. Uh, but, um, but uh, there's, there's quite a lot of uses for for the MDI. Uh, yeah. yeah, I see. For more typing means more mistakes, says Paul from PNG. Because yeah, like I said, I'm just showing you how that teach function works, just so you know how it works. <laughs> but. I have never used it and probably won't ever use it. Um, but like I said, it, it would work in a pinch if you, if you needed it to the, the only, th I, I do use the MDI a lot for, uh, you know, this, like I said, when I was running the, uh, let me pull it back in here. The, the stuff like this, it works fantastic. Uh, but, you know, this thing never wants to work right because I don't have it hooked up to a machine. Because it didn't. And one thing you could do also. Path for some reason. One thing you could do if you have short. Ah, this is kind of it. It's kind of more work, really. But uh, just to point out that all you have to do is type in the file name in the MDI status and it'll actually run a file. As opposed to, uh, 
as opposed to clicking open, which is not really that much trouble, and searching for the file yourself. But if you have a lot of little, say, uh, whether it's a keyhole or something else, and, and, you, and you use them quite a bit, then uh, you can keep them in mind and then just type them out. I like to... Uh, there's, there's certain files that I have that uh, on my keyboard I actually program the F function keys to have, uh, for instance, the keyhole is one of them. I know exactly that uh, if I position my... Most of the time it's a three-quarter inch... Uh, piece of wood or plaque that I'm doing uh, that I'm working with so I have a stock um, program which will cut a keyhole from whatever position I set it will set zero zero it'll cut the keyhole and then it'll uh, reset and uh, I have a function key <laughs> I, I know it's a little convoluted but I have a function key that will just call up that program and I, and I do that with a few programs. Okay. I got out of that. I figured everybody I didn't see any other questions over there. Like I said, the, the MDI is very useful. The teaching thing, probably not so much. You know, unless you're doing something, you know, making a circle or a square or something really super simple. Um, uh, Jim Dockrell. I know what you mean, Jim. <laughs> That's funny. Silly man. All right. Any other questions? I know we're probably not too late here. That's nah, it's getting close to the hour, I guess. Uh, like I said, I just want to show folks that because I had, right, it was weird because I did. I don't know whether it was last week or the other week. We I, I guess I was talking about how I use that MDI for running a one part program and then moving it over. I don't think that was, what did we talk about last week? Last week was Christmas. Uh, oh, it was the beginner mistake. Yeah, it was begin last week. Yeah. I beginner mistakes. That's right. That's right. Uh, because I was saying how you got to remember to hit, once you move it over, you got to hit memory, hit zero out. Cause if you don't zero out, whichever axis you just moved, when you hit cycle start, it's going to go back to where you were and try to cut the same part again. Uh, but uh, anyway, I like to use that. It, it's real easy, especially if you're trying to use up the drop that's in a big skeleton. You don't want to have to take it and cut it out and use it later. While you got it clamped down, go ahead and make some clamps. Can't have too many clamps. Anybody got any other questions or anything? Anything they want to talk about? Now. Everybody's yeah. getting ready to, uh, they're uh, warming up their eggnogs for the holidays. Yeah. I know. It's, uh, it's that time. I tell you, I've, I've been busy, though. It's, it's weird how, you know, everybody else is slowing down for the holidays or getting all their stuff caught up. I mean, of course, a lot of stuff I'm doing is, projects that that i want to do and not not just getting cnc kits and stuff like that but um all right well i guess we'll uh i guess we'll get out of here and call this one a, and call it a night yeah there's not a whole lot going on over there in the, in the chat now probably got thoroughly confused them or maybe they're all trying their MDI commands. So, Oh, wait, uh, I have a quick question. This should start up uh, something. Uh, interesting. Hold on, Javi. I got, I got, uh, oh, I'm Larry sorry. Duggar says, Dave, tell my grandson, Riley, Merry Christmas. Merry ah. Christmas, Riley. <laughs> I got a quick question for y'all. Okay. Um, any New Year's resolutions out there related to CNC? I mean, we are coming up on New Year's. Uh, well, how about you, Dave? I I don't know if I would call it a resolution. I got some stuff that I'm going to be 
do. And in fact, that's one reason why I'm so busy right now, but it's not anything I can talk about just yet. So, <laughs> so no, I guess for right now, uh, but I hope, uh, I hope we get some more, uh, entries in, you know, we got, got some decent, uh, <laughs> G zero, Dave zero. Thank you. Z zero. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love it. Um, replace my Gatton with my CNC with a guy. That's a good new year's resolution, Matt. Somebody's, you know, somebody's going to get an awesome pendant. This is, you know, these things are like, what, 80, 90 bucks, I think. This that is, is cool. quite the one, the one I have. Uh, we've got some uh, a set of Rockler clamps. We've got uh, a Kingsport gift certificate. And uh, like I said, my buddy Carl sent me 50 bucks, and I haven't, I haven't bought anything with it yet, but I, I don't know whether – I was kind of waiting to see how many entries we get. And, you know, if we get – depending on how many entries we get, if we get quite a few, I'll try to stretch that out and get as many things as I can. Plus, I'll kick in for a bunch of stuff too. But I figure I'll buy some router bits. Um, I've got uh, a CNC router essentials book down there. Uh, and I may get another one or two of those. So I'd really like to, you know, I don't know how many people are probably on sending an entry, but I'd really like to make sure that everybody gets something. Um, so Absolutely. Make, you know, for your effort, because I know, I know it's a pain in the butt. You, you know, you're here at Christmas time and you got family gatherings to go to and office parties and kids plays at school and all that stuff. Everybody's busy. I, I totally get that. Um, but I, I had one guy on Facebook, he said something like, yeah, well, you, you need to do a, an Easter challenge or something because, you know, busy at Christmas. I say, yeah, but that's why I started talking about it in October. <laughs> you know? So it's not like you haven't had time. Uh, you know, everybody waits to the last minute, I guess. And then, of course, like I said, everybody's busy because all that other stuff. And I totally get it. So, but I hope uh, I hope we get uh, you know enough entries to give away all this stuff. So I guess we're going to wrap it up. That might go back in where it's warm. <laughs> no, I still I still have to do a little bit of sanding. I got the stool sides. Oh, okay. So I got a little sanding on the side, and then I got to stain it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, good. All right. Um, uh, we're going to get out of here. Thank you all for watching tonight. Um, if you got anything out of this show and enjoyed it, leave me a thumbs up on the way out or a thumbs down. Either way, I don't care too much. And if you got any comments, uh, you know, something you want to see us do, I might try to start doing some more, um, uh, shows about you know different features in the Mach 3 because we haven't really you know we do kind of the basic stuff and uh, I don't know whether anybody would be interested in that you can leave your comments down there below or whatever let me know what you think if there's any part of Mach 3 that you don't don't quite get or you would like for us to go into a little more we can do that because that, that manual, you, if, like I said, the link's down below. If you want to download that manual, I think it's like 157 pages or something like that. It's really long. Um, and a lot of stuff doesn't really apply to a CNC router anyway, but a lot of good stuff in there. All right. Well, we're going to close it up. Thanks for watching. Everybody have a uh, Merry Christmas. Yeah, this is the last show before Christmas, so uh, everybody have a Merry Christmas. Jeff Morgan says, yes, more on Mach 3. Okay. Uh, if you got a certain topic, let me know, Jeff. Uh, otherwise, I'll just open up the book and pick some. <laughs> are you, uh, are you uh, doing the uh, – are you going to have your uh, show on the 29th or, or the next one on the 5th, Dave? Well, you know, I said that I, that I might not – do it on the 29th, but I think I probably will just because I got to looking and that's what I had said that's on the website. 
you know, ah. I've been saying all this time that I'm going to do it on the 29th. And I probably, I think it won't be any problem. I don't think because uh, Christmas is Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, people will have their entries in by midnight Christmas morning. So uh, that gives me like three, four days yep. to review the videos and stuff. And, uh, Yep, I will likely not be here, so I will wish you all a uh, happy new year. Uh, but uh, I'll still try. <laughs> okay, yeah, if you can do it from location, yep. you're welcome to join us. And you can wear your hat too if you want. Yeah. I'll have to up there. It's a it's a bone chilling. What is it? Fifty six. Maybe it might get down to forty eight. I know some parts of the country that's uh, practically triple what what they're what their temperature is but still yeah it's a lot colder than miami which i'm sweating here in shorts yeah it's been it's been kind of cool here um uh, it well i guess in the 50s but we've had the wind blowing so it's it's been a little cool yeah. but not too bad i'm not complaining all right we're out of here everybody have a great weekend and merry christmas and we'll see y'all next week with the results from the Christmas challenge. Everybody have a good one. Good night. Good night all. I heard Christmas. <laughs>